There are oxygen bars in California where you can actually pay for a deep breath of O2. Astronomers have just announced the discovery of this same gas in outer space. This white dwarf was incredibly unexpected. Well, no shit, Sherlock. I'd imagine any star that is spewing pure oxygen into space and has an almost pure oxygen atmosphere is going to rattle a few scientific theory cages. Thor news is for winners, and that's why you're here. So stick around. We've got a video message. I'm going to have to science the shit out of this. Hit the button, baby. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Party Dance Time. All right, we are over at Popular Mechanics talking about jaw-dropping things. Like, a newly discovered star has an almost pure oxygen atmosphere, but good luck breathing in the bone-crushing gravity. All right, March 31st, 2016. I smell a dirty rat. And you couldn't smell things unless you had oxygen. An artist's depiction of white dwarf stars Sirius A and B. I've been watching Sirius in the sky at night lately, and he's been freaking out in colors all across the spectrum. Anyway, if you had a bunch of stars spewing a bunch of oxygen into space, could you breathe in that part of space? You know, just kind of hanging around, floating around? I would think so. And then maybe in your whole solar system, you could go to every planet and breathe without needing special gear. That'd be special, man. What if our solar system's like that and they just been fibbing to us the whole time? And your space agency's like, oh no, you can't breathe in space. And all of a sudden, you can breathe on the moon, you can breathe on Mars, you can breathe in space. Kind of like when the Russians said they found living, growing organisms on the outside of the International Space Station. And then that story quickly went away. Yeah, man. Astronomy, nothing but heartbreak. Astronomy, nothing but heartbreak, bitches. A newly discovered star is unlike any ever found with an outermost layer of 99.9% .9 pure oxygen. Really, you have now tested the entire outer layer of that whole star to know that it's 99.9% .9 pure oxygen? Smells like pure bullshit to me. Its atmosphere is the most oxygen rich in the known universe. Heck, it makes Earth's meager 21% look downright suffocating. The strange stellar oddity is a radically new type of white dwarf star and was discovered by a team of Brazilian astronomers led by Kepler de Souza. Oliveira at the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul in Brazil. The star is unique in the known pool of 32,000 white dwarf stars and is the only known star of any kind with an almost pure oxygen atmosphere. The new white dwarf has a mouthful of a name, SDSSJ124043016710346. But it's been nicknamed Dox pronounced Deox by Kepler's team. The discovery was reported today in a paper in Journal Science. This white dwarf was incredibly unexpected, says Kepler, and because we had no idea anything like it could even exist, that made it all the more difficult to find. Yeah, I wonder how often people find things they didn't even believe existed. And scientists seem pretty close-minded. You know, I think the universe is capable of creating on a grand scale with great diversity that would blow our minds a million times in a million ways. Scientists don't ever think like that. First, not all of them, just some of them. Missing gas. Here's a quick refresher. White dwarfs, like docks, are the antiques of the cosmos. They're the hyper-dense husks left over when stars largely sputter out of hydrogen and helium fuel. All but the largest 3% of stars end up as white dwarfs. Really, all of them? Like, you guys say this stuff. Like, how many of the stars in the universe have you even cataloged? And you're going to say that 97% of them end up as white dwarfs. And how many of these have you seen from birth to death? Like zero? Where does all this stellar math come from? Although Dox is only slightly bigger than our home planet, it's 60% the mass of our star. Which means you would not be able to jump as high on that planet. I believe that's the scientific statement. Boris Ganesicki, an astronomer at the University of Warwick in the UK, who is not involved in Dox's discovery, confirms that the exotic white dwarf has an almost pure oxygen atmosphere, diluted by only traces of neon, magnesium, and silicon. He writes in an essay accompanying the science paper. Wonderful. This chemical composition is unique among known white dwarfs and must arise from an extremely rare process. Dox presents more than a couple mysteries. Who is doxing me? Why are they mad at me? What did I do? Oh, wrong, wrong Dox, I guess. So what makes Dox's oxygen-rich 
atmosphere so unexpected? Kepler explains that Dox presents more than a couple mysteries. For one, almost all other white dwarfs in the sky have an atmosphere thick with light elements like hydrogen and helium. These light elements are the final dregs of the star's elemental fusion fuel that survived the star's earlier life cycle simply because of their weight. These light elements naturally float to the top of the white dwarf. Okay, great. What happened to all these light elements? Asks Kepler. How did they all get stripped away? Good question. Kepler also explains, although traces of heavier elements like carbon and oxygen can be detected in about one out of every five white dwarfs, it's never quite like this. A white dwarf's atmosphere is never purely one element. It is often diluted in a pool of lighter elements, perhaps most perplexing when oxygen atoms are found. They're spied in far heavier white dwarfs. Smaller white dwarfs evolve from smaller stars, which don't fuse together atoms into oxygen as they collapse. By all calculations, Dox would have to have to be roughly double its weight to have even forged oxygen atoms in its earlier life. You have to wonder where this oxygen even came from, says Kepler. Or not, you know. If the star, I'm just still thinking about a star spewing oxygen into the solar system and having a solar system filled with oxygen so you don't need helmets and shit. That would be awesome, man. In short, by simply being so weird, Dox completely defies our general scientific understanding of how stars evolve and eventually form into white dwarfs. But Kepler suggests that maybe this shouldn't be all that surprising. That's because, he argues, scientists have often ignored the wacky results that can come about when stars grow and evolve while locked in a binary dance with other stars rather than alone. Yeah, your future and your evolution depend on the partner you choose to do a binary dance with. So when you pick a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a husband or wife, you better pick a good one. If you do, good things are going to happen. If you don't, bad things are going to happen. Then you're going to look back and be like, how did I get in this shitty spot? Like, well, I chose a shitty binary companion to dance with, you know? Or then you'll end up with another binary companion that'll drag in a bunch of other stars. So it'll be like you and five other stars and you'll get torn apart by their Roche limit. But I guess a lot of stars are swingers. That's not for me. I think the main problem is that we, astronomers, have dedicated the last 50 years to calculate the evolution of stars that are not interacting with each other. Well, that's stupid. When at least 30% of the stars interact with a binary companion. Yeah. So they studied the stars that aren't interacting with each other. Instead of the ones that were. Two people dancing is way more interesting than one person dancing. Wouldn't you agree? Well, you live and you learn. We can learn from the mistakes of those crappy ass scientists. Kepler believes Dox looks so strange because of an unlikely binary origin story. His rough theory goes like this. At some point, Dox may have been a larger white dwarf, locked in a twirling ballet with another star, much like our own sun. These two stars were about the same distance apart as the sun and Venus. And these two stars were about the same distance apart as the Sun and Venus? Say what? As Dox's dance partner started to sputter out of hydrogen fuel, it formed what's called a red giant. What? You can't... Oh. It expanded rapidly, becoming so big it actually engulfed the white dwarf in its outermost layers of gas. Kepler believes Dox would have started siphoning off the red giant's gas onto itself. At some point during the siphoning process, when it reaches a few million degrees, it exploded. That explosion threw all types of matter out, as when Dox might have lost all its hydrogen and helium. This type of situation is known to have happened with other stars, although it's never been seen to just leave oxygen. Yeah, it's kind of like if you get in a bad binary relationship, it will take and strip everything good out of you and then just leave you to explode. Man, so be careful. You know, the world's most boring job. Dox was discovered in a data mountain of 4.5 individual star observations collected over the last 15 years by a New Mexico observatory in a project called the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. It was found by way of a process so grueling that its initial discoverer, one of Kepler's undergraduate students, Gustav Urako, deserves a mention. Oh yeah, it's a super grueling task. Give it to the undergraduate student. Urike was looking for strange new types of white dwarfs in a data pile of 300,000 possible observations. These observations are simple graphs about what colors of light came from each pinpoint source, called a spectrograph. Because a computer isn't easily programmed with such a vague task as find something weird and cool. Arik was challenged with the grunt work, task of physically looking at the printed out pages of all 300,000 graphs. After a few months, he could filter a one or 2,000 each day. Well, that's fast. Like reading a book says Kepler. Yeah, what a heartbreakingly boring book. What a great way to end your own article. That is, at least until it gets thrilling, because after a year of scanning and towards the end of the 300,000 graphs, Arik came across Dox. Because of its oxygen atmosphere, Dox's spectral graph looked truly unique, and he brought it to Kepler. Eureka, man, you're a hero. All right, there you go. Most boring job led to my most boring video. All right, peace out. God bless everyone.